Hello guys and girls and welcome to episode 32 of the VR Inside podcast. This is a weekly VR, AR and MR talk show that is live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel. You can tune into the show live at 4pm in Europe, 3pm in the UK and 9am in Central US. If you missed the live stream, you can catch up with the whole show every Sunday as I re-upload it to my own YouTube channel, Virtual Reality Oasis. Or you can check out the audio-only version, which is available on Google Play Music and on iTunes. If you've got any questions, comments, or feedback during the show, please put them in the chat, and we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Now, this episode isn't going to be live. We have pre-recorded this episode, as myself and the Zimmeister are going to be in London going oh. to EGX Rest at the weekend. So apologies for that, but I hope you guys still enjoy the stream, and we'll try to uh, get involved in the chat and interact with you guys as much as we can. So let me introduce you to the crew if you're new to the show. The first guy is the real life Booker DeWitt. Of course, it is our Nathy. How you doing, dude? You're right. Yeah, I'm doing fine. Thanks for uh, introducing me that way. It's an honor. Yeah, I'm going to start cosplaying soon. And mm. uh, yeah, the first one is going to be Booker DeWitt because he's like the like the main protagonist of Bioshock Infinite. So yeah, duh. I would go for that one. So I got like a, a really awesome costume coming from Russia all the way over here. And it, it's it's going to look amazing. Maybe I should just, just wear it in one of the episodes. You should. You should we wear it next You episode. know what? We should all wear our favorite superhero outfit. You know? <laughs> Nathan, I'm come I'll be wearing a superhero outfit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I'm definitely going to be wearing Borat. Like the, the green. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to suggest that. <laughs> I'm just going to come as Gollum. <laughs> 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 so wait, Book of yeah. Wind or whatever this is, that's that's the Hobbit or is that No 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 uh, Book of <laughs> Book of the Hobbit Book of Hobbit is, is the main <laughs> is the main the main character from <laughs> Bioshock, of course. Like Nathie's the biggest Bioshock fan in the world. What? I played Bioshock. There's no fucking books of wit in what? Bioshock. No, no, the Book last of one. Do it. Oh, the last Bioshock one. Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. Yeah. So, spoiler alert, there are no hobbits in Bioshock, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my days. Right. <laughs> Next up, he is my new partner in crime, the prison boss himself. It is, of course, the rowdy guy. How you doing, man? You all right? Uh, I'm doing great. And you, you have to admit, we got out of that prison pretty fast, right? <laughs> we we did. Out of there in no time. Like. <laughs> Definitely but chose I, the right I, crew member for that. <laughs> no, I, I'm, do, I'm doing great. You know, it's been a busy week for me. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're recording midweek now. That's always a nice time for me to, to do some stuff because I have actually a little bit more time than I have uh, during the weekend. So yeah, so good. So good. So next guy, he lives his life quarter mile at a time and loves to go fast and furious. It is our resident Twitch streamer, ZimTalk5. How are you, dude? You're right. I am beautiful. <laughs> I am I, I, I am put to shame, however. Despite being the racing dude here, I've literally never watched any of the eight Fast and Furious. So that <laughs> no, is no, not, seen seen any of them? not a single oh. one of them. My, <laughs> but I have shame two kids, a dog, two cats, and a fucking wife who's demanding, and then talk to me about seeing movies. <laughs> But they broadcast Never. them like every week on the television, you know. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, well, yeah, but we don't we don't watch TV, so uh, okay. we we just we just don't uh, we we do uh, we used to do uh, Love Film Service in the UK, which was like you get a mail, mm. you know, through the mail, and like we we watched. This is how bad it is. How backlogged we are. We watched The Sopranos over the summer and finished that in uh, nine months. That's a long time. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. wow! Wow! That's what life with kids is like. So guys, uh, you know, wear protection. Uh, Word of warning out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> last, but by no means least, myself, Mike, the bearded ball guy from Virtual Reality Oasis. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about jousting time. Are you willing to kickstart this jousting game? Well, we shall soon find out. Leap Motion, uh, Project North Star. Is this the AR headset we've all been waiting for? We'll soon find out. And the Infinidec treadmill, a VR treadmill that allows you to run like Wade Watts in the Oasis. So we'll be talking about that as well. So a jam-packed episode for you today. But first, let's uh, find out what everyone's been up to in this very short week before uh, <laughs> recording this episode and the last live stream. 
Uh, and let's kick it over to Zim first to find out what you've been up to. Cheese, oh, cheese, Mike. Uh, I'm going to touch on something that I, I didn't get a touch on on the last one, just very sure. briefly, and then I'll talk about an amazing track that we ran last night in a set of Corsa because uh, that that game is just wonderful. Um, so the first thing I wanted to touch on, which is like, do you guys? I, I don't know if you're here in the in Europe. I was about to say the UK, but for the for the for you guys, do you know what choose your own adventure books are? Yes. Yeah, like a like a, the classic books that used to get in a library as a kid, and yeah. you'd say, okay, if you'd go, if you do this, turn to page such and such, and then you read on the story from there, and then it says, okay, you made this choice, turn to this page. Is that right? Yeah, yeah the frustrating book it. series where it tells you to turn to a certain a, a certain page, and then in just a giant black hole, you're like, God damn it, I picked <laughs> the wrong thing again. You know. Yeah. Like that. So I I I played a VR experience that was like that, and that sounds really cool until you mix it with the fact that it was a sponsored by Jeep. It's called Jeep Sessions. And you basically pick one of two sponsored vehicles from Jeep <laughs> and you go off and a dude who looks like he's Hawaiian basically says, you got to pick one way. Come on, pick faster, pick faster. You know, you're like, you're like egging you on. And then you pick the way and you get a little thing of a video. But even if you go with, the, like you can pick two dudes or two chicks and obviously I picked the chicks. So I went with them. And then you get to see still a dude in the water. It's like, hey, hang on a second. Were they even surfers? <laughs> what is this Click all about? <laughs> but, but I don't know. Choose your own adventure, like, just as a thing. Like, I always, I always really gelled with that as a kid. Like, you know, it was like this whole kind of pathfinding thing. And um, you were one of those I want to see it done right. I want to see it done right in VR, you know? Something like that. Yeah. Well, channeled, but, but there's multiple paths, and you kind of have to explore those paths. It's not mm, just completely yeah. open-ended. I'd love to see that. It's like more of a curated story telling experience definitely like something that is like a permanent decision so if you make that decision then that's it you can't go back you can't change your mind oh. and um do you know we was talking about um like russia blood team uh with the bravo team and all that kind of stuff they yeah. made uh, until dawn right yeah. that was one of those games that was exactly like that once you made the decision you couldn't go back then and change it unless you just replayed the whole game again mm. so oh. something like that i think i would really like because it means that really every decision you make has real consequence can you explain um, that to I, I get you because that's like that's not like so the VR experience was literally just kind of a rail. I call it a ra on rails like rail coaster shooter, um, and you weren't making decisions that influence. So are you talking about the PC game? No, no, no. I'm talking about the the PS4 game called Until Dawn. So Sorry, until un, Until Dawn, Rush of Blood was uh, the PSVR just shooter, right? Like roller coaster yeah. shooter game. Yeah. But the 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 game that sort of um, came before that was the the standalone game on PS4 yeah. called Until Dawn, and it was basically yeah. like a, a teen slasher movie, yeah. but you had complete control over the narrative and who survived, who died. But every decision you made was completely permanent. So mm -hmm. if you killed off a main character by accident, then that was it. You were screwed. You couldn't go back and That's and change it. Cool. So you just had to play out. I have to say, yeah. I kind of liked it about those kind of books, though, that you could go back. You know, I, I liked yeah. it like so, like I, same. Uh, okay, that's that's what. Okay, no, I don't like this ending. You go go back and like figure out like what would have happened if if I would have chosen that kind of stuff. What I what I didn't like about a lot of those books is that the ending often still like converged like like a single. They had, for example, two or three endings. Yeah. And you had like a lot of decisions, but eventually you came like still on like the same page for like this the same kind of ending. I didn't like that really. But, <laughs> it's just um, like the, the ending was just like and it was just a dream. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I do I do agree. Like we we need more games where you have that like heavy rain effect where you make oh, so many decisions. Yes. Uh, and it's the same with like the game you guys played, uh, Rowdy and Mike, uh, uh, A Way Out, you know, where you yeah. also make decisions. And in the end, you're also like, hmm, maybe I should play it again, but now I should do that instead, you know, like, so yeah. I mean, it, it's that that's a very cool thing uh, yeah. that you can do also with VR. I think there are many possibilities oh of how you God. can introduce Heavy yeah. rain in VR. I would, I would, I would fall out of my chair for that. That game was so good. I mean, that was like the end of my my yeah. i was i was like at my my wife's uh mother's house my in-laws and i was just like did a time on my hands she had a ps3 and i'm just like all right i'll download this and play this and blah, blah, blah. oh my god that story was beautiful the bit with the uh the saw type of section where you're at the, the desk and you have to choose all the different implements to try and like yeah you know, oh, oh that was horrible it's, that was, horrible. it's so great though yeah but beautiful um, 
No, but yeah, if I was going to play a way out again, I would just make sure that um, Rowdy gets in the, uh, the the dirty laundry cart this time. I tricked you. I tricked you. So I'll take another just a minute just to say uh, one more thing, Mike, uh, just sure. that, we, that we touched on, just because it impressed me so much. So we ended up, and I'll show a little video clip of this, but we ended up... Um, well, I ended up on Reddit just basically saying, hey, thanks to this one uh, map maker. And I said, I played this track, which was a Canadian-based uh, lake called Lake Louise. It's based in Alberta, Canada. And it's just basically a loop around a lake, and then there's a mountain pass cycle. And I was like, I was so impressed with this. And someone pops in and says, you do realize there's like a 50-kilometer version of this track because I would played the 23 one. And I was like, no you're, you're kidding me, dude. Like, tell me. So I hyped up like all my audience and that about it. And literally that same night, I was like, I got this track. They only ask that you you down, you down basically pay for the 50km track, whatever you want to pay. So you can pay a cent, a pound, whatever you want to pay. I gave the guy 20 quid. And I was like, I got that track, got it set up on my servers. You know, we all raced it. We had like 12 people on and we just picked all these different cars and we just flaked around this thing for like two and a half hours last night. And it was... Wow amazing like to just do that with like all these different like old classic vehicles and out and through the mountains and everything if anyone doesn't know about this and owns a set out you have to try it uh we have a server online for it so if you want to go out with the buddy go ahead but i had to mention so, that one amazing yeah sure is is this like a, a fan made track then is it like yeah yeah, 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 absolutely. Really? Well, that's mostly what we actually run, Mike. So um, right. I mentioned, I think it was last week that we have 42 different servers up. And yeah. of that, only about six of them are base, you know, base game files. Otherwise, there's a wow. pack, pack of uh, mod tracks that we have for download. And then you just can log on to any of those other ones. So that's why every two weeks we just kind of hop between different levels. But they're all what are yeah. called mod tracks. So they're, you know, made by by fans and some of them are just incredibly well done. But like you say, like, even though they're just made by fans, they're like modeled after real life tracks, right? Yeah, the vast majority are. And some of them are wow. um, what are called fantasy tracks, like never been never been done. But the vast majority are, are, are real. Like this is a real place. One of my viewers uh, tweeted yeah. me back a picture of her and her fiance out on a lake. Uh, on this lake i was like that's mad you're in the middle of that thing that's awesome that's it's so cool. like blue color it's just beautiful yeah, I don't yeah mean, I definitely like a, go on sorry sorry, sorry like, i need to go like for fancy it. tracks re remind me of trek mania for some reason that but it's not too. it's not that crazy right where you like in this not course, so you know, like, <laughs> also like let us know in the comments below who bought like uh, a set of cars on on the humble bundle last week i'm yeah. very curious or one of the other uh, racing games i mean there were also like uh, cars, uh, the Rally. Uh, titles on there and uh yeah. no no mario kart sadly sorry no, for, no the, mario. For, the, for the beginners <laughs> Uh, but we definitely have a small uh, niche of people that follow us that are very into sim races. Oh. So they really do appreciate this kind of uh, yeah. feedback and, and information about sim racing. Definitely. So let's uh, kick it over to Rowdy. Find out what you've been up to this week, mate. Yeah, I've actually, I haven't played that much. Uh, I've played this week uh, with you, Mike. I played uh, in big screen together. Uh, we played uh, A Way Out, which is actually a 2D game, game right? I mean, uh, we found a way to play VR game to play 2D games uh, in virtual reality and still have a lot of fun, actually. So um, yeah. what we basically did was um, we, uh, well, Mike made this like virtual room. In, in which you had like a big giant virtual cinema and we loaded up uh, the a 2d game on that cinema and we found a way to well kind of like make it so that we wouldn't have any lag but we could still play in split screen uh with each other uh, so it's a cooperative game it's a game in which you are tasked to like escape from a prison and yeah. well that's it's going to come a large part after that, but we haven't gotten that far. We actually just played it up until the part we got out and people were saying yeah. that we got roughly what, 25 or 30% in? Yeah, about 30%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we, had, we had a lot of fun playing that one. It was... Um... It was basically, I was the, the good looking Italian guy with the big nose. Uh, <laughs> it was a bit rowdy. So it was like very suited yeah. to my char character. And was Mike was also character. very much in character. He was the guy who thought he was very rational and thought <laughs> that he was. An... <laughs> Funny fact, yeah. by the way, the, the, the good looking guy, uh, he's the developer of the game. So he's actually ah, like one of the. Oh, yeah, God, I've, I've been. been I've been saying the entire time, look at this giant nose. It's filling up the entire <laughs> screen and stuff like that. <laughs> Rowdy, you're not getting keys anymore. Sorry. You know, you screwed yeah. up. Interesting, yeah, interesting but... little fact about the split screen, guys. Um, I just heard this on the for on, on some forums about um, Wipeout because Wipeout had also been designed for split screen. 
And apparently mm. the developers said that the fact that they designed it for split screen and because of the way stereo imaging works, it was like they'd paved the way for VR. So the game you guys played could very well be an easy candidate for VRification. Mm. But the, the, the mm. way that they do split screen, though, is that you, because um, it's not always split screen. Like sometimes oh. when something happens on the other screen, the screen will like switch over and maximize it on that. It's very, it's very filmic in a way. Like it's like, like watching a comic yeah. book, basically. Oh, uh, yeah. And each one has their own character that you can yeah. see, but you can also then see what the other character is doing at the same time. It's, so it's not yeah. split screen in the way that you see the same thing uh, on both. But it's, uh, it's yeah. like really awesome to see like a, a local yeah. split screen game, but also like an online uh, one. Because my friend came over to my house to play it and we played it next to each other. And I, I can tell you, like, I'm sure that both ways is like a total different experience. So mm -hmm. like going into VR, being there together, but kind of not being there is like a really strange, cool, like mix, you know, where it was, it was such an awesome experience because, you know, Mike is so far away from me, but when we're playing together, we even like, we have like little avatars in there. So we're even looking yeah. at each other when we're talking, which yeah, is such yeah. a strange experience because it's all happening in real time. We have no lag or anything on the screen. We even had that, like that one thing that you can see on, on Mike's uh, Twitter and Facebook page where we had to like time uh, the run like uh, upwards we had to like do like a jump like back to back trying to climb the wall and we had to yeah. time that together and it was hilarious because uh, at first we, <laughs> we messed it up a, a little bit but i mean we didn't have any like lag or anything like that so we did manage yeah. to get that right and uh, get all the way up there so that was actually uh actually pretty awesome I really enjoyed it. And the best that. thing as well, yeah, like I, t I totally enjoyed it as well. Like uh, the, the great thing was as well, we had our separate screens up as well, like our second screens. So we could see like the chat live and interact with all the people that were watching the live stream. So yeah. like we'd be playing the game, then I'd quickly look and then see the chat and then interact with them and then go back to the game. And loads of people yeah, like, really got into it. Tips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So now that we've just broken out of prison, we definitely want to go back and, and do some yeah, more, yeah, though, right? We definitely yeah, need so. to do that. A lot of people have been asking it as well. And then the other game that I played was uh, was Island Time VR, but uh, I I don't think it's uh, it's a game I'm very good at. It's a game where you need to survive on an island, um, but there's not a, it's like a very small island. It's like you know the size of your room basically, and you need to like get some some stuff out there. Uh, you need to cook some fish and you need to cook uh, uh, catch some coconuts and eat them up, and uh, that's basically it. It's just, it's yeah. just like a timer, like <laughs> you need to survive for like I'm so interested. many minutes. Yeah, I'm interested. Um, I'm interested. <laughs> You're yeah, it's, yeah, I it's, love survival it's, games. But well, it's not really like I wouldn't say like it's a lot of like crafting and that kind of stuff. It's basically yeah. just putting two things together and you get like a spear. It's a, and it's like a racing, like a racing yeah. survival kind of game. Like arcade, you know what I mean? And it's like yeah. it's got this talking crap that is like funny in the first five minutes, and then it gets like seriously on your nerves because it keeps on blabbing. But they did that with the intention, of course, of being annoying because uh -huh. it's like constantly, constantly, constantly talking. So, crab trap. <laughs> it's, it's called Carl. Carl the crab. <laughs> Close. 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 Very have, original. Uh, you have Han, Han, Hanna, Anna, the the shark, uh, and uh, Stephen the seagull. My interest is waning. <laughs> My interest. Is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did we have a VR experience with that guy? Yeah. No, not Gary yeah, the, the seagull. This oh, is Gary. The, that was Gary. Gary. Yeah. That was his My brother. That was Stephen's brother. <laughs> all, all that needed was just a double barrel shotgun, and I would have been happy. <laughs> yeah, but you, you you can't kick the seagull though. Uh, Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So not one to try then, Rowdy, huh? <laughs> Don't do that in real life. <laughs> I tried Don't that kick too. <laughs> Didn't work out well. Real story. Uh, I used to do that, Mike. I used not kicking seagulls, but I used to <laughs> put stones on crabs' heads as a kid, and then inevitably one took all of that part of my thumb away because I had it wow. in my hand for a family photo, or like a giant hermit crab. Put it behind my back. And then in the middle of the photo, it had clamped down on all that flesh. Uh, and I just, uh, action, pulled it away. I mean, it was so uh, much exposed that when I took a handkerchief from my dad, wrapped it around, instantly, the whole thing went red. That's how much I was bleeding. It was, oh, oh. wow. Wait, 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 wow. wait, 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 wait. I, I think I see something on my, oh, it's it's yellow icon. Thanks, Zim. Oh. Yeah. Thank you, YouTube. No, that's a joke. It's fine. We're fine. We're fine. Everything is okay. <laughs> no panic. <laughs>
<laughs> so Nate, uh, tell us what have you been up to this week, dude? Okay, so I played two things. I played the American Dream uh, once again. Why did I play it again? Because I said it wasn't that good. Um, well, it's because my 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 video went viral, and I was like, maybe I should just make another episode because people were asking for it. And I was like, okay, let's just play some more. And I, I still think it's not not very good. Like there are still mm. funny bugs in there that just just got me like like stuck in the game. But there was also one funny bug where um, I had to uh, wash cars with guns, so I just had to shoot like the the dirty spots on the cars and just shoot them off. And uh, uh, for some reason, the game was so bugged that I didn't have to reload anymore. So I was going so fast, cleaning all these cars with like a like a machine gun or something that the whole like dialogue and the game started to like fall behind because I was like having a high score. And then in the end, for some reason, uh, because you every time you do like a, a task or like a level in uh, the American Dream, you get money, right? So like it 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 just totally messed the game up and I got like an infinite amount of money. <laughs> it was like infinite. That's what it said. It said infinite. So I was like, hey, wow. now I'm rich. And now I got like like infinite amounts of money that I don't need because you can't really use it to a spend true America. In America. But that just shows again that it's not working properly. And as, no, as no, Nick no, also no, said, that's, that's capitalism. Nathan, no, that's capitalism. That's pure capitalism. Oh, okay. That's perfect simulator. <laughs> Okay, sure. Uh, but as, as we made like the same joke at like the same time. <laughs> yeah, that was good. High five. Oh, wait, wait, this way. <laughs> there we go. Bam, nailed it. Wow. But uh, as Mike said, it's like more like a, a talking dog simulator game than a real like, you, you can't really do much. You more listen to everything. Uh, but I did make babies with guns as well. That was like interesting. So uh, yeah. Um, but then you need to watch That's my video if you want to know how that works. So if you want to see how American <laughs> babies get made, then watch my video. I also played, uh, yeah, Planet of the Apes. As you guys said, it's not very, very good. Start is nice, super, super duper cool. Also, what I want to say is that the detail of the like the fur, wow, wow, Don't oh jump. my days, that like they 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 nailed that part. But did you see that I, you could even increase that detail in the settings? Yes, yes, I did. I did. Uh, but you couldn't turn off the comfort settings. Well, that's that's what I wanted to say. Like, you can't change any of the comfort settings. So let's say if you want to jump or you want to run, you have like that little like vignette. Vin how vin do you call that? Like, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Um, like around you, and and I don't know. It broke the immersion. Plus that whole Wiz Wilson's heart part where it shows you a ghost ape of where you need to go just yeah. spoils the experience a bit for me. Where it's like, oh, now I know what I need to do next, and I can't just be free in my own decisions. So yeah, I, I would say don't buy it. And uh, I don't know, like uh, that, that's that's all I have to say about it's it. It's interesting about Planet of the Apes is like having played the game and, and being again, like like you disappointed with the game. I really wanted to watch the final film, which is uh, um, a war on the Planet of the Apes. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd seen the first two films, but I hadn't seen the final one. Mm -hmm. So I actually watched the final film. And like the thing is like the movie is actually really good. Like I really enjoyed the movie. Like the... Oh. Um, uh, Andy Serkis plays like Caesar and he does like a fantastic job of it. Like the motion capture is incredible. And apparently like Imaginati, the, the studio that made uh, this oh. Crisis on the Planet of the Apes game is actually partly owned by Andy Serkis, uh, the mm. studio. Mm. Um, so it's a shame that yeah. it was disappointing. Yeah. He should make a Spiegel simulator next. That's what I would recommend. <laughs> but uh, yeah. uh, last but not least, uh, it's funny that you mentioned the movie after I, I played the game, I did feel like I wanted to watch the last one as well. So it does have mm. its, uh, like a, its positive effects, uh, movie-wise. Yeah. yeah, I recommend you do because it's a great movie. You, you would you'd like it. Uh, I really enjoyed it. One, my God, I don't remember. Uh, so it was um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, uh, uh, War on the Planet of the Apes, and Rising of the Planet of the Apes. The, the yeah. newer ones, you mean, not the classic... Uh... No, no, no. These uh, are all the, the remakes. So yeah, there was yeah. the classic, Mark, uh, and then there was a new trilogy. Yeah. Yeah, so the classic like, like, made in, like, the 70s. Like, yeah, way also the movies, eh? Of course, yeah, I've yeah. seen that. Yeah. Sure, I was just a, just a tall, uh, boy. Yeah, you did watch that one on videotape? Because you I didn't watch Fast and Furious, so we got it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, like the original one's got like uh, James Franco in, and then the second one's got like Gary Oldman in, and then the third one's got... Um, Mark Wahlberg. Uh, Right. Uh, oh yeah, the second one's got Mark Wahlberg in, and then this one's got the uh, Woody Harrelson in it. So uh, Woody, Woody uh, great, great, great lineup of, uh, of characters. Um, but great yeah, so I, I, 
is yeah definitely amazing amazing cgi one link um, but yeah from what nathan was saying just a quick one um i saw in a newsletter for the team behind i expected to die which is shell games they actually mentioned explicitly and this is the first time i've heard a dev team say this they said we for those who don't know i expected to die is a game where you basically sit in a chair and mm. kind of use a, tel- a kind of a kil- telekinetic ability to pull things and push things, and it's a it's a room escape game basically. Yeah, uh, it's really good, yeah. it's very worth doing. Um, but but they said we wanted to avoid teleporting because we think that that should be avoided. So we implemented telekinesis, so you didn't have to teleport. And I, given how early in the cycle of VR content that they did that, oh yeah, I mean they're yeah. great. They they really do some amazing games. And if anyone's ever watched. Uh, Jesse Shell, one of their, I think he's their CEO, actually speak about game making and his his forecasts and projections and stuff. Really worth, really worthwhile videos to watch. And I think a lot of his projections have been coming true. So um, mm. they obviously kind of are a step ahead of he's a lot the of other developments. Master studios. of the metaphors. He's a future teller. Yeah, he seems master it. of the metaphors. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, a bit like Nathy, I, I checked out um, The American Dream as well. And I have to say, I think it's uh, actually my most disappointing game I've played this year so far. Like that's how that's how disappointed I was. Because the thing is, the trailer portrays a completely different game, I think. You know, mm-hmm. it portrays this game that is a satirical look on US gun culture and how like, you know, you use a gun to solve every problem. And I, I, I don't mind that. I think that's quite funny. And it had everything from like uh, changing a nappy to uh, flipping burgers with guns in the trailer and i was like this looks really really fun and the game just simply isn't that fun like 70 percent of the time it was well, i don't know if it is actually 77 percent of the time but it felt like 70 percent of the time you were just listening to buddy the dog talking at you basically and then the the other 30 percent is the shooting part which again isn't that fun like the whole pacing of the game is just way off yeah uh, you feel like you're just standing there doing nothing and you're not a part of the game for yeah. such a long period of it yeah. um but I did like the fact that it was a, a sitting game and you're sort of shuffled from level to yeah. level in this little cart. That was kind of fun. And the reload mechanic of, uh, you know, the the magazine kind of pops out of your chair and you kind of do it in slow-mo. Uh, That's kind of cool. But the rest of the game was just so disappointing. And uh, I just couldn't wait to finish the game. Like, I just wanted it to be over because I just wanted to do it, like, for a review. And then a bit like Nathy, I encountered, like, two serious bugs in the game where I just couldn't proceed any further forward. Um one where I was like feeding the baby like uh, his food, like it just didn't work. And then at the very end, which the end wait, is wait, completely wait. messed um, up. Did you use the gun? I did. Yeah. <laughs> you have to like you have to dip the gun into the baby food and put it in the baby's mouth. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mad. But like and the thing is, it's actually quite funny, but it just is so badly done as a game overall. Yeah, I just, it's, it's, it's really, like, really it's a shame. I like, like too much dialogue basically. If the, way if it too was much dialogue. Harder, and it was like like let's say an hour or two hours long, and you just played the murders for like five minutes because that's also a thing. Like every mini game yep. you play, like almost every mini game is way too long. Like the flip and burgers, it's yeah. like, so how long yeah. is this going to take? You know. And then the car yep. wash one, in my opinion, was too sharp because I just wanted to gain more money. Of course, like I had, income, yeah. but I wanted even more. <laughs> but that's the thing you, you earn all this money but you can't actually no, do anything no, with it's it it's kind of um, yeah well you buy some guns but you always have enough yeah. it's not like you need to replay yeah and I don't think I don't have you seen the ending, Nathy? No, 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 no. Like the the ending is just totally messed up. Like it's just like you're tripping yeah. balls. Like I don't know what the hell is going on there. Um, but again, I had a bug at the end, and then I was just like, n- no credits rolled or anything like that. I was just like, so what? I'm just <laughs> no, stuck it's, here it's now not, in like purgatory. Unfinished. It feels unfinished. There yeah. is something going on with that game. I don't know. Yeah, it was <laughs> such a shame. Um, but yeah, out of all the games that I've played, that I was really excited about. This one definitely the most what? disappointing. Not even Jumanji. Oh no, that was from last year, right? Or was it this year? Yeah. Wait, no, you're. Ooh. The thing, no, no, no. the thing is, I knew Jumanji was going to be bad before I even played oh. it. So that's you, you don't even count that one as a game. No, no. Oh. Like I was actually genuinely excited about like American Dream, but it was you the know. biggest disappointment so far. Um, so yeah, that's what we've been up to this week. Um, so let's uh, start this one off with some quick news. We've got a few topics of quick news before we move into the main topics. <laughs> Uh, the first one is um, Zuckerberg obviously getting quizzed by Congress over the data breach at Facebook. It's kind of loosely related to VR because obviously Facebook owns Oculus. 
Um, but in Washington, D.C., senators have been grilling Mark Zuckerberg over the Facebook uh, data leak scandal. Okay. Uh, Cambridge Analytica reportedly stole 87 million people's uh, information in one of the biggest data breaches in history. Uh, I don't really know the ins and outs of the case, but I got to catch a few minutes of the live stream, which was streamed yesterday here and some of it today as well. Uh, today being Wednesday, obviously, we're pre-recording this. Okay. Um, but the, the, whole, the whole thing, like out of it, like it, the whole thing just seemed totally awkward. <laughs> like... Zuckerberg was totally awkward. The Congress people were totally awkward. Like Zuckerberg, he was just sitting there looking like an alien or something. Like I was waiting for him to like lick his eyeballs or something crazy. Like he's almost like a crazy lizard man. He was like having his his little sip of water like some sort of machine. Well, and then you had these like these old fuddy duddy senators who were like probably still using AOL dial up to like log onto the oh. internet just had no idea what Facebook was or how it was used or or really like how culture is using it and yeah. modern society is using Facebook. Mm. They just had no concept of how it actually works. Um, but it was just interesting to see these two like aliens go to war, basically. <laughs> That's kind of what uh, I, I enjoyed from it. But I don't know. I don't know about you guys. Like I loved well, it. I loved it. I mean, Twitch, Twitch fucking ate that stuff up because – Right. Um, they 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 just went to town. So Washington Post had a stream. I don't mm. think they've they've streamed maybe once before, but literally yeah, right. in one stream, they now have more followers than I do. So I affect them. But uh, yeah, twelve thousand wow. they got over over overnight. Um, and it was uh, it was. I wonder what games are going to play now. <laughs> yeah. American dream. <laughs> I, I think it was. I think it was thirteen thousand concurrent that were watching. Um, I caught it kind of towards the end, but like you, Mike, when I saw Zuckerberg drinking, he does this weird like, <laughs> like elevate his beverage. It's like, it like this. It's like this. It's like this. Well, it's. <laughs> have, you seen, have, you seen, have you seen Trump doing it? Yeah, I mean, I, like, maybe it's, it's like, like American thing. That's like, not that bad. I don't know, but Trump. if I was being grilled by so many senators and like you know they were all staring at you, I'd probably be drinking a bit funny as well because everything and everyone is watching you. Like it's it's kind I of crazy. Feel bad like I did feel like, bad. You were sitting in this like little like yeah. little chair and like a desk, and it was like people like all like yeah, around yeah. him. Cameras high everywhere, everywhere. like looking at you like that. Seen like, the photo. I don't know if. Have any of you guys ever played like uh, an instrument, like uh, like piano, mm -hmm. guitar, or whatever? And when you when you do it like like the classical way, you have like a recital at the end of the year, and they would put like a piano in the middle of a stage, and you as yeah. a little boy had to go and sit on the piano, and then the entire jury would sit like on top, like sitting. That's I think that's yeah. how he felt the entire time. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, I can't make a mistake I, now. I can't make a mistake now. And it, ah, it feels so weird to, to see that. You, you got to give him yeah, the props for just, just, just sitting there because he didn't have to. He did apparently. it well. I think uh, he did it well because the, the stock price has shot up again after the interview as well. So yeah. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, also, yeah they, they're back to, uh, back like to the really high point that. before Cambridge Analytica happens. So, uh, mm. But that's because everyone's waiting. Are Investors watching. are waiting, waiting, waiting. It, it's the same thing that happened here in Scotland with when the ref referendum came. Because everyone was holding mm. out of their houses going, are we going to break free? Are we going to break free? Oh, we didn't. Okay, now we can sell. You know, And so like everyone mm. just surges out. Same thing with the stock price. So they just... They just went like investors are holding and holding and holding, and they're like, you know what? Okay, nothing bad broke, so let's just buy. You know, yeah. it, was, it was brilliant. Also interesting, yeah. they were talking about Palmer Lucky as well. Yep, yeah. they did. Yeah, yeah, because they, they wanted to say that that it wasn't like um, politically motivated that they fired him. Is that what they were trying to why, say? Why did that question even come up? Because it had nothing to do Weird. with. The I, I just fell on my chair. I was like, hey, finally something I I recognize as a <laughs> like, whoa, hey, <laughs> look. <laughs> there were a lot of questions there that would like did not oh, matter. There was this one guy who was asking how Facebook made money since it was free. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. He was like, we we use advertisements. He was like, I see. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's awesome the thing. Dude. People like have a lot of power there from the old media and are sitting there for yeah. such a long time. So in the end, it's like yeah. kind of like new media tells old media what to do, but also the other way around. Because I mean. Yeah. So, I don't know. But I mean, the back, the backbone to a lot of this, and it's actually something that I'm a bit of a, an, I won't say an expert in, but I'm, I'm, I'm in, I've been in, kind of in it for like the last year, is this thing we have in, in the Europe economic area, the EEA, uh, called GDPR. So General mm -hmm. Data Protection Regulation, which is coming, which to put it in a nutshell, is if you are a data subject and you give your data to someone, 
it, on soliciting your data, you need to base, they need to basically be uh, forthcoming and transparent and say, right, we're going to use your data for these things. And we're going to use it for these reasons. And you basically can't step outside those bounds. And this is EU legislation targeting directly at Facebook, Twitter, Google, all, all the big data consumers. And it essentially means there's a few things that, that are there, but it's data protection by design. You can't just be handing data off to somebody else. And one of the important things that people need to know about, uh, no matter the service you use, is you will have a right if you're an EEA um, EA member uh, to request the right, like to be forgotten. So it's like you're gonna mm. go ahead and delete. And and what's the gun that's pointed to the heads of organizations that don't uh, don't do this for their data subjects? Well, it's huge. It's something like is it four billion dollars or some percent of global turnover? It's it's enormous but figures. Um, is, wow. Isn't it a problem that because what what Cambridge Analytica basically did was that they made a survey in which people gave their consent that their data was being used, right? Like, what, isn't that like a problem that people just give consent to, you know, whatever is written in those like consent forms? It just says, yes, 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 yes. I want to go to that survey. I want to do this. I want to do that. And then Facebook doesn't have a lot of power over that because it's a third party that is just using Facebook as a medium to extract information from users that give their consent to that information. So, so it's not Facebook that is selling that that to a third party is actually the user himself that is selling it or giving it for free directly to a third party. But, but the interesting point was like um, that Zuckerberg mentioned that they do have all this information, like well, a lot of this information in their terms of service, but no one actually ever reads it. That's the thing. Yeah, like when you sign up to things, oh, no one ever long. reads the small print. Like, like, like yeah. uh, that's what you're of course. How many of course. Apps? apps and like third parties are there that like when you you can yeah. sign in with facebook yeah. you can log in with facebook you can sign up with facebook and as soon as you do that you know you get like a do you want to give this application access yeah. to this and this and this and mm-hmm. that who reads that nobody reads that but it, i mean it is a little bit also like the user's fault then not to mm-hmm. read those kind of things I, I don't know if you guys ever watched a south park episode where like uh, apple updates its uh, terms of uh, terms of use uh, to like uh, that everyone who accepts the terms of use can like uh, become like a human centipede for like a program. <laughs> you know? and, like, and like nobody signs it except for like three people. So they make like a human centipede of them because they agreed and they were like, but nobody reads the terms of service. Everybody That's reads hilarious. the terms of service. Yeah. That's kind of what this entire discussion was yeah. about. But do you think, like, do you really care about like, like individually, do you really care about what information they hold in you? But like, that's, I, I, that's like, the thing, like, I, I mean, we, we're all public figures here, but yeah. the stuff that, that I, at least, I don't know for you, that the stuff that I share on my social media is stuff that I don't mind being shared. I would never share something in which I'm not really comfortable with, with knowing that everybody could figure this out. I would not share things like, for example, a phone number, or I would not share something unless I think that, that I need to do something else or whatever. But I mean, you're still responsible for your own data in a certain way. Yeah, so I would is, not give consent to... Th- this is kind of coming back to a different theme here. And you see it in a lot of financial markets. And now you're seeing mm. it broadened to data, uh, which is if it's if it's like there's almost fair, right? So like what Mike Rowdy, what you guys are saying, right? Who, who reads the whole ream? That actually doesn't... In mm. most cases, stand up in court anyway. If it's if it's buried in in the bottom of a twenty pager. So one of the things one of the things that's I think really important is the simplification of yeah. these data notices and what's being mm. used. That's one part. Another really cool piece, which is just a simple thing, which all of us on the internet can I think appreciate, is again if you're in the EEA, right? One of the things that companies can no longer do is pre tick a box saying that you're going to consent. So you need right. to take right. action to opt in. It must be opt in. And so that's one other step. Is it small and is it the right direction? Yeah. One thing that I would just compare it with is I think GDPR is going to do a lot of good. Uh, I think it gets companies thinking about data. Um, mm. What I think really failed in, and, and the EU doesn't always get it right. Anyone else have to click accept uh, for every bloody website on cookies? Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> And that's because of the same thing. They're like, oh, people don't know they're collecting cookies. Who Mm. actually understands anything more about that because they spammed it across every website and made it mandatory. Mm. 
So that was that was bad regulation, I mean, in my opinion. I mean, like the the whole like data mining is happening everywhere. It's even happening in VR. You know, when when you when you play like games or experiences, that they 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 must also gather some information from that. You know, of course, and, like how long you spend happens. in it. And then that, 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 that's you I think credit I mean, cards somewhere. You think that Visa doesn't lose that information? Oh, of course. Of course they do. Course they yeah. Uh, just a quick question before we move on. I wonder if it is actually possible in this day and age, though, to be completely off the grid. Like, uh, I possible. wonder if that's. I, yeah, definitely. I it's wonder, possible. I wonder how you would do how, that. Like, I don't want to No credit cards, no uh, bank account, no, uh, um, uh, well, no uh, bank card, I mean. Uh, use mm. a VPN, no social media. And uh, no phone. Well, yeah, but how do you how do you do a job? Like you know, you'd have to get panic. Okay, okay yeah, but I mean, that, I mean, you, you can always go off grid. But the, the yeah. thing is, it's in in a in a day and age that we live in. If you want to function and if if you want to be a YouTuber, you know, it's it's nearly impossible to be. That's going to be pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to share like, my data. I would I would watch a channel of a of someone <laughs> off the grid. But I mean, I, I'll say I'm going to create a channel off the grid. That's it, my idea. <laughs> Trademark. I, I mean, I mean, in the end. I mean, in the end, the better question is for how long can you stay off the grid? Because it will be yeah, exactly. very hard in, let's say, maybe 10 years from now. To course, like, yeah. They're still like, let's say, uh, tribes living in, in, in a forest somewhere and they don't have internet yeah. and stuff. And, but mm. that's also getting rare. You know, it's like every every place gets like populized with like the modern man and, yeah. and, and women, you know, so. <laughs> We're getting very political and like, you know, felicity. Philosophical yeah. on the next show now. Topic. <laughs> <laughs> so next topic is uh, Coachella is a music and arts mm. festival. If you did not know, it's held every year in California. Uh, it's coming up this Friday, the 13th, and it will be running all weekend up until Sunday, the 15th of April. Uh, and this year you can join in the festivities from your very own house. Oh. Uh, if you've got a VR headset, nice. because they're going to be live streaming. That's cool. Uh, 180 VR content for the whole weekend uh, to, to its YouTube channel, so you can tune in, check out some 180 nice. VR footage, which I think personally is is better than 360 footage because it tends to be a uh, higher resolution, uh, better fidelity, and uh, yeah, it's just more curated. You know, like we've discussed before on previous shows. Yeah. Um, so if you've ever wondered what it's going to be like to be at a festival, like a, a big crazy festival like this, then you can check it out for yourself. Uh, obviously, you know, it's, it's in California, so not everyone can go. But there's some amazing acts such as uh, Beyonce, Eminem, uh, Post Malone and Alt-J. So if you're interested in checking wow. out some awesome VR content, then you can tune in to uh, this VR content through the Coachella mm. YouTube channel. No, no, uh, no holograms VR. this year? No uh well, you never know. What was it? Uh, Tupac? You might make a return <laughs> as, a, as a hologram. You never know. That's what did I you ever watch that, by the way? I thought it was like I, one of the most I amazing things like, ever. That was sick. That was so sick. I, I've <laughs> always been a big fan of uh, Gorillaz. And Gorillaz. they've done yeah, some Gorillaz. amazing yeah. stuff for that kind of stuff. I'm they also do that in my car right now, actually. Yeah. 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 Have you guys ever seen that, that video clip they made? Like one of the last ones where they did like a 360 and you're flying in through VR. space. I, I watched it in yeah. VR. It's freaking trippy yeah yeah, yeah. no I, I did watch clips of it but i didn't watch it in vr i just watched the 360 on youtube but it looked pretty crazy pretty yeah. awesome um so yeah that's going on this weekend if you're interested in checking we'll that out link yeah, that, there, right yeah we will chuck a link yeah of course you can check that out uh the other thing that's worth checking out um i mentioned it on last week's show we talked about it a little bit and that is the uh tv show called kiss me first it's a vr tv show uh that's airing in the uk at the moment on channel four uh it's out every monday at 10 p.m in the uk but it will be coming to netflix very soon it's kind of a fictional show but it's like vr meets uh ready player one meets black mirror it's got like a real dark undertone to it really really cool uh the second episode was uh on monday just gone i got to check it out and i really enjoyed it um the second episode was a bit more interesting than the first and it's definitely ramping up to something uh, even bigger so uh yeah if you're interested in vr then i would definitely check that one out i watched as well. the uh, i watched the first half of the first one i was dead tired that night so unfortunately I fell asleep for the second half but i did watch the first half you said that the headset was rubbish and you're like oh fuck the headset it's like yeah. the DK one. i think it's not so bad actually i really liked um the way the uh just the characters interact and the way that they yeah. broadcast the main character and the way he, she looks like in real life. And then she looks in, in the virtual world. And then the interaction is, I don't know how they did it. They must've had a good animation budget because for this being a UK only program, it's yeah. proper. Like it's really well done. 
Mm. It is. It is very well done. And like you say, um, when I mentioned that uh, headset with the antennas on the top, I, when I watched the second episode, they were showing some more futuristic headsets in fairness. Okay. So I will sort of go back on so, my comment so a little it's, bit. It's just a cheap one. It, they it, had it's, someone with it, it, it's, it's like it's like it's like having a Vive, but then there's also like a Pro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, like a Vive. Yeah. So with the and the legs are like. It, but this would more compare to like a Google Cardboard and a Vive Pro. Like that's how bad this like crappy one looks. <laughs> that's but, not yeah. so bad. She at least she flip it up, right? Like that was kind of cool. That gave me a kind of Matrix thing. Yeah, we want that. We want that. That's that's handy. Oh, Mike always being the critic. Jeez. No. Yeah. Oh, so it takes so much to make me happy Mike. nowadays. <laughs> all <laughs> <laughs> uh, right so moving on to our first main topic and that oh. is jousting time so oh, recently it, this was shown off at pax east which unfortunately none of us went to but it looked really cool so maybe next year we'll go uh but the team that brought you prison boss which uh, obviously rowdy is very familiar oh, with uh, Tre- trebuchet they're mm-hmm. um making it possible that you can become a jousting legend yourself uh without having to learn to ride a horse or even leave your house which is uh, pretty interesting yeah, that's amazing uh, you you can face off in uh, 1v1 jousting matches uh, with the goal, obviously, to knock your opponent off uh, their horse. Uh, but the interesting thing about this whole premise of this game is that people that don't own a VR headset can get involved in the matches. So say Zim wants to live stream this on Twitch, for example, uh, I could fire up the mobile application and take the role <laughs> oh, of someone in, in the crowd. Me, Mike. <laughs> yeah. VR v so, mobile, really? Yeah, so like what I can do is uh, I can just uh, be an avatar in the crowd. You could be live streaming, playing against another real player. And then I can use the app to send like uh, emojis, like thumbs up, thumbs down, poop emojis, oh. which weapon you should choose, and try and influence your decisions in game. Don't be so by critical, being a spectator. Like, no, 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 no. Being the... <laughs> I, mean, I misunderstood. So I thought I, thought I was going to go one to one against another person. He's saying that you can support a player who's in it? Yeah. Oh, you can go to one to one against another player, of course. So you could be like up against another Twitch streamer, for example, in some sort of like VR face off. And then like we could be watching your live stream like like we do normally on Twitch Uh, or or, like I could be watching it on desktop and then I could interact with the stream on my mobile or via the desktop application as well. Cross platform mobile versus VR ain't happening, but Not, not not versus. But spectator right. Right. and more sort of an interactive like element for a spectator. This is like Jackbox, then, if you know what that's all about. I think it's a it's kind a of concept. kind of yeah. I think it's an interesting concept, definitely, because concept. like watching live streams is fun. But like, say when we were like live streaming a way out, if someone could get involved with like you know choose the dialogue for the prison guard, for example, yeah. it would have made it that much more interesting. You know, so this is yeah. just kind of getting your viewers involved it, a bit more. It, it's nice. Like, if, if they would have done something where you could play against each other, then they yeah. would have made their, like, uh, uh, player base bigger as well, because we all know, like, multiplayer, VR, and yeah. it's kind of tricky. So, like, making, like, is it only going to be on PC or also PlayStation VR or... So this is the funny thing, because this game is being kickstarted right now. They're actually launched a Kickstarter campaign. Okay. Um, it's, it's active right now. It's got around 20 days left as the time of this, which is Wednesday. So it will have like a few days when this goes actually live. <laughs> Good calculation. Um, <laughs> but is it yeah, like, yeah. like a fun Kickstarter just to like advertise the game? Do they really need the money? Or is it really day day? Like, is what, what is this? Like, because usually they... Thing? They did. They did really well, like with the sales of Prison Boss, right? Uh, you know, Rowdy helped them out massively there. Um, but like, um, so you would have thought they could fund the game themselves, but they have actually uh, raised the sort of total pledge. It's around twenty three thousand US dollars is what they're looking for to to kickstart the game. Uh, as of today, uh, with twenty days left, they've only raised uh, just over one thousand six hundred US dollars. You know what that is? Um, that's just that's so, just a is is you know is this enough? Is there enough interest behind this to actually drive yeah. it forward? It's like we don't want to dip all of our funds into this and, and project it. Uh, and people yeah. aren't interested in it. Yeah, yeah. But Twenty grand so is nothing thing, like, for a project, Mike. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. Well, the I thing is, that the, the demo that they've got is pretty functional right now because they were mm-hmm. showing it off at uh, PAX. Yeah. You know, like PSVR Frank friend. and, and yeah. Caleb from Reality Check VR. They were they yeah. were playing the game together and they were sort of pretty positive from what I see. So, very uh, enthusiastic on it. Yeah. But but how how many VR games really get like successfully kickstarted? I I, I haven't seen many people doing that in the first place. Uh, plus like let's say if they put Prison Boss on like Kickstarter, would it have made like 25k for example? No like, way. 
No, I don't think I so. Don't but think now, so. of course, because it it, it went yeah. onto YouTube, it, it had like that 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 viral potential, and then Rowdy mm. played it and others, and became really popular. But then, still, the question is, did they sell well? Because I have seen a lot of games go viral on YouTube, but in the end, no one bought it. It's more like people watch it, but they do not own a VR headset. So that's also still yeah. a thing. But I think it it did pretty well. I mean, I, it's like Rowdy can say something more about that, I guess, but. Yeah, yeah. It's like the Happy Wheels effect, right? Like yeah. everyone liked watching Pews play Happy Wheels, but no one actually bought that game. Uh, I guess. No, yeah. they, they, um, actually, yeah. they sent me an email actually. The, the developers from uh, from Jousting Time to uh, to announce the Kickstarter, and uh, they were actually very happy with uh, how well the Prison Balls did it. Uh, so I don't I don't think that they're uh, mm. that I think they're doing fairly well for themselves. But I think indeed, like Zim says, they're trying to see if there's a general interest yeah. for this, uh, just to see yeah. as a project. They've made a, a demo now. Uh, yeah. So was, that's basically what they say on their on their on their Kickstarter as well. So why yeah. do we use mm. Kickstarter? We've built a solid demo. We've tested it internally and have had already many jousting tournaments at parties already. And the re- reactions have always been very positive. We are now ready to turn all of our work into a fully fledged multiplayer experience with your help. So that's, already exists, though. that's the only thing, you know. I mean, yeah. I don't know if Nathan's played it, but there was a demo that came out in the DK two days that had it was two castles aside from a three-part kind of segmented delta of land where you had like rivers Mm. to cross and stuff a couple of towers and what you would do is you'd start off on horseback on either side of the castle and you'd race at each other uh and you could control the horses like going through forests and stuff going at each other you could pick uh, three classes you could pick i think it was a dude with a sword on the on the horseback a lance or a a bow and arrow and it was multiplayer like 3v3 4v4 and that was really good it was quite rudimentary at the time but again Mm. i think if I was to draw a graph of like interest over time, like yeah. and they and they, I don't think they kickstarted, but they tried to garner interest through like trailers and stuff, and like people yeah. got interested in it, and then it was like waned again. So I, I'm nervous yeah. about a multiplayer only title. Well, that's, that, that, yeah. that's the thing that I found because of course Prison Boss was single player and it got a huge successful in in that part also because it was it was injected with like that special kind of humor that they were having. So I'm expecting to see that in this title as well. But indeed, mm-hmm. it was a. It was a single player experience. This is a multiplayer experience. So a lot will depend yeah. as well on yeah. the crowd that they can draw in because if there's nobody else to play there, I don't know how they're going to solve it. it. I don't, I don't it, know if there's a single player variant or if you can play it against an AI or I don't, I don't know may, at this point. Maybe, maybe because they did have such success from YouTube and everything else, maybe they're catering this game to that those that kind of people that would play that. it. Yeah, that would be smart you know? to do that. It's but, still, then, but it's still, you know, it's still risky. Make a multiplayer play experience. Playtime. Playtime's an issue. Like, look at a, a successful multiplayer VR game that does well at almost every convention I go to. Gang Beasts. They VRified it. They have 2D. Yeah. You can sit there with your buddies, you know, split screen type of thing, and yeah. you're just playing away. Or you can VR over, or, or, you know, online. And some people mm. would say it's yeah. third person. But the thing is, if you think about playtime, you're probably playing a map for like 10 minutes. And then what's the chance? It's what I call the battlefield effect of you sticking and staying in the game. A game like a jousting okay. game, I can be honest, I've played them before. You get tired of it pretty quick. So, yeah, but so this the, is the thing. It's not just jousting. Yeah, that's um, what I think as well. Okay. It's, it's still from the Magus from Prison Balls. It's, and the Prison Balls, it's not really a prison escape game. You know, it's it's more about like the interactions that you have and like the things that are happening around you. So right. I, I don't think that this will be just like Mike said. Also, it's not going to be no. just a jousting game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so like it's all about that kind of medieval experience, right? Yeah. So so just to, to explain like the jousting controls, like this is kind of funny. Yeah. Like with the you control the horse with your left hand, you've got your weapon in your right hand, which there's six different weapons to choose from, uh, and you gain speed by yelling through the mic at the headset at your horse. <laughs> really? Yeah, so this is kind of what I mean about that they're almost catering this to Twitch streamers and YouTubers yeah. to make this kind of fun but it, game to watch and get I, involved in. Yeah, but I, I mean, I've seen that before where, where developers make a game that is specifically targeted to YouTubers. We have seen a lot of those games on, on Steam. Yeah. And, like, I, I get it. It's it's nice, and it does very well, like, like promotion-wise, because you will more map your company than really the like the sales of the game i think because in the end like mm. sales wise it's not going to be like most youtubers that hype a vr game up are first of all not vr youtubers and second of all don't have an audience who own a vr headset in the first place they just like as as rowdy mentioned last week uh, that first person view where you can just role play with it is is just super fun but it doesn't bring you sales so i think more like ex- exposure is the thing here then mm. 
where your company is more like, oh, so the Prison Boss game is from that company. Oh, and they now also make this game. So then people are like, oh, maybe I should also buy that one then. Um, but for like the, the facts here, but this is Steam Spy, by the way, it says that uh, Prison Boss sold around four to 5K uh, copies. And that's, that's, uh, that's pretty good. What, 5,000? Yeah. 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 VR title yeah. on Steam, it's not that's bad. Not, that's not bad at all. From an indie yeah. developer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but with this game, like I said, it's not just jousting. Um, mm-hmm. There is a, a feast area, which is like a kind of social multiplayer part of it. So you can chat, eat some food there, uh, hang out, <laughs> or just challenge someone to a joust. You can call someone out and say, hey, let's let's solve this on you know the, the course and joust mm-hmm. it out. Um, but it also, like, <laughs> just, just for like... Um, not just for VR YouTubers and, and, and content creators on Twitch and everything else, but mm. it also seems quite a good one for like VR arcades uh, or like uh, like that bar in London, you know, like uh, what yeah. is it called? The VR concept, you know, where they have uh, events. This would be like a really cool game for that kind of thing as well because everyone could see it and get involved. Uh, but like I say, it's, it's, it's a Kickstarter campaign. If you're interested in backing it, go and check it out on Kickstarter. Uh, it's called Jousting Time. Um, they've obviously, if they reach their goal, they're going to have stretch goals. Right now they're aiming just, for PC, so Rift, Vive, and Windows Mixed Reality. Mm-hmm. But if they get enough funding, then they'll uh, look at doing a PSVR version. Is there well. is there anything you get when you when you fund this, or is that uh, not? Yeah, so there, there's tons of unlockable stuff. Um, you know, you can have your name in the credits. Uh-huh. Um, the basic, the basic, very basic yeah. package is like seven pounds or ten dollars, but it goes up in obviously uh, uh, pledges. Usual. You know, you can get T-shirts, you can get your name in the credits, you can get to make an avatar, you can do all sorts of other right. uh, stuff as but, well. But no so pillows. if you're interested, you can check. no pillows, no pillows, unfortunately. Okay. That's a uh, that's a Mike. Give them a uh, suggestion. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, marketing one hundred and one <laughs> pillow. <laughs> right. So uh, moving on to our next uh, topic, which is Leap Motion, uh, Project North Star. So this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, this isn't to be confused, by the way, with Magic Leap. Uh, they're obviously developing their own AR headset. It's a completely separate company. They're doing their own yeah. thing. Leap Motion are the ones that originally sort of got involved with uh, making finger tracking and hand tracking in the, like, it was like DK1 days. Is that right, Nathie? Uh, yeah. With DK2 days? Definitely early on. Yeah, I I, I so think you, it's uh, it's DK two days. So like DK one, they were hmm. still like I played a lot with the Leap Motion with like the DK two. Not so yeah. much now anymore, but uh, with yeah. this uh, thing coming, I'm like, oh, okay, now we're talking. Now we're yeah. talking. Yeah. And that's the same, like I actually bought a, a Leap Motion as well and I used it on the CV1 and uh, I think the only ever experience I ever actually used it in was Alt Space. Um, Alt Space had uh, finger <laughs> tracking and hand tracking. Um, Am I the only no, one who doesn't have a Leap Motion? Do you guys all have it like six of... sense controllers as well? <laughs> like, <laughs> no one has six sense controllers. Right? <laughs> it's like that um, that I saw yeah. one time. Like, like someone saying like that he was playing with the six sense controllers, and he was like, "Oh wait a minute, that's that other dude that bought like the six sense <laughs> controllers as well." <laughs> but, but Mike, can you tell the listeners how like the leap motion is yeah. looking like again? Because it's kind of like a small thingy on your front of your. Headset. Yeah, so right now, the Leap Motion as it stands right now, this isn't the headset that they're re- launching, no. but the Leap Motion is like a small uh, USB device that you can attach to the front of your VR headset, whether you've got a, a Rift, a Vive. Uh, Zim's uh, demonstrating it right now for the for the video uh, watchers. Um, but essentially what it does is uh, it uses clever technology to um, sort of have a look at your space in 3d and can track your finger and hand movements yeah. and it actually does it like pretty accurately actually yeah. and it was really really impressive technology uh in the demo you could use your fingers to pinch out and make cubes and and hold them and and do all sorts of funny uh stuff with them but the unfortunate thing was it was a development kit um it was never actually like a consumer product so it was never really implemented in that many uh like games no. or experiences wait, wait, other wait. than alt space i think you, alt space was the only one ever space and an old space? No, they had like they had an old space. If if you if you went to their website and also Oculus Share back then, they had like a leap motion section with lots of stuff. There was like a, a lot of stuff you could play around with. But there were like, yeah, like the one where you where you were in space with like like little like, like little toys you could touch with your fingers was like one of the but most popular were there ones. Any <laughs> games that were not based on the fact that there was like a leap motion thing, like you could because the only interaction you could have in those kind of demos that I saw was like you could grab things, you could throw them away, you could no. make them bigger and smaller. I, I played. 
I played one where you could be like a wizard and you could do like spells with your fingers and you could like That's shoot cool. fireballs. Um, That's cool. And also like a whack a mole. Um, there were there were like a lot of like games, mm. but just just little demos, you know. But not so much like uh, now, right? Like no. there's not really anyone well, saying like, oh yeah, we've implemented like leap motion in our game. I- yeah. I'm surprised if someone buys one now. It's it's still like like a fifteen dollar thing, and it's kind of fun to have. Yeah. But it's not like everyone is still talking. Like DK two days, it was like hot stuff. Hot stuff. Mm. Mm. But this is really interesting, right? So not only uh, are we going to talk about Project North Star, but I was checking out their website today to do some research, mm. and they're actually mm. working on mobile VR implementation. Mm. So what they're doing is making sure that um, a mobile version of it integrates with Android VR. So any Android VR-based VR headset, which pretty much all of them are Android or Android-based, uh, the Go is, Gear VR is, uh, Daydream is. Um, all of them are pretty much. Uh, you can actually use this uh, Leap Motion uh, mobile VR uh, attachment, and that could implement finger tracking for mobile VR headsets. Now, what's interesting about that is because mobile VR is obviously limited to a single controller that's only three degrees of freedom, whereas if you've got actually fully fredged finger tracking for two hands, well, that could open up the floodgates for all sorts of games and applications on mobile VR. drain the battery even faster. <laughs> oh, you're such a pessimist, Ryan. <laughs> Yeah, the you, one you thing could, that explains Mike, you, you have, have to drown him. Three minute experience yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, just just piss on my bonfire, Rowdy. Jesus. <laughs> no, but yeah, like cool. uh, that yeah. is cool. It, it is pretty cool. So like whether whether it be good or not is another thing, but it actually got me quite excited to the the prospects of using this technology on a mobile VR platform. I thought was quite interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's talk about like Project North Star because this is their latest uh, headset. It's a fully fledged headset design. Um, and this is what they said in a statement announcing this new Project North Star uh, this week. Mm. They said, um, the coming of virtual reality has signaled a great movement in um, in the history of our civilization. We have found ourselves the ability to break down the very, the very substrate of reality and create ones anew, entirely of our own design and of our own imaginations. As we explore this newfound ability, it becomes increasingly clear that this power will not be limited to some virtual world separate from our own. It will spill out like a great flood, uniting what has been held apart for so long, our digital and physical realities. Was it like written by like Tolkien or something? Or like <laughs> Dan Brown? Or... I thought it was a pretty epic speech. <laughs> like tear rolls over my eyes. Like... Okay, so they made a headset. So they made a headset, right. So the headset specs, it's an AR headset. So it's like a, got a glass uh, front to it. It actually, if, you, if, you've, if you're if you familiar with Judge Dredd, it doesn't look too dissimilar from his, his, his helmet. But bear with me, it is actually quite cool. Yeah, so it's got two um, low persistence uh, 1600 by 1440p uh, displays pushing 120 frames per second uh, with a field of view of 100 degrees. How much? Uh, and that's a couple... 100 degrees. This has to be oh, tethered, so it's smaller. It? It's less than a five then. Ah, but when you compare it to what we currently have in terms of AR, AR uh, the HoloLens uh, is 35 degrees. Yeah, yeah. That is so small. Like, it's such a small field you, of view. You've tried it, right? Um, have I you have. tried it? I have tried it. You've all tried it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, I tried it and I found that screen, like, ridiculously small. I was like... Yeah, it was. <clears throat> yeah. I tried it at um, an event in London just recently. Uh, some guy who had it there was like uh, demoing it after going to see Ready Player yeah. One. So yeah, I was chatting to him. He's like, "Oh, do you want to try?" It? I was like, "Yeah, sure." And then I was looking at a car. I was like, "Is this is this the whole the whole screen?" And he was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Dude, this sucks." <laughs> and he was like, spe- he's, "He spent ages trying to convince me how good it was." I was like, "Dude, honestly, I, I, I like." this sucks like this is bad like this is my first experience i think it's bad um but so yeah 30 35 degrees of the hololens compared to like this 100 yeah, degrees yeah, of, of course, uh, the of course. Of but hang on one question impressive. before you move away from your demo mike i'm really curious uh was it just the car thing you did or did you see like an integrated uh, spider demo or anything like that like where the wall breaks apart and all the the ar kind of integration yeah, with yeah. the environment because that's pretty neat uh, all I all I saw was a, a 360 car that I, could I got. The, I got the roller coaster as well, and I had to like you know look like at the roller coaster like up close to like make sure that I saw it. I don't yeah. like it. I don't like. Obviously, I, like, like, I don't know. Like I got one. I own mm-hmm. one. And I really see the potential of it, and of course, I get it. Like field of view wise, it's very small. But if you just dive a little deeper into what it can do and what the apps oh, yeah. are, the and the view, I also the potential I also, is enormous. 
I also tested out like like things off road from developers, and it is very nice. And with this like new one from Leap that is a lot cheaper as well because this one was very expensive. <laughs> Then I, I think we're, we're heading the right way. Plus, I mean, small steps, right? I mean, this was the first yeah. one. And for a first one, it's not that bad. I mean, it runs and, Windows. It has like a lot of memory. Yeah. You can wear it for like three to four hours. It could have been way worse. But the Windows one is a, is a, is a prototype, basically. It's a developer kit. So it's yeah, really well. yeah. two years old now, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, how old is it now? Yeah. Like the HoloLens um, is pretty old, right? <laughs> Um, By the way, it was but, it was really funny. One of the UK conventions that I went to, um, what Nathy just said is so true that it only lasts three or four hours battery time because it's all on board, right? Like the screen, the sound, course, everything's yeah. on board. And, and the yeah. thing is, we're trying to demo it to people. What are they doing? They're lined up, queued up, right? You go from person to person, headset, headset, headset. And eventually it's like, oh shit, I got to charge this. And so people have to wait. And they had queued people up, book, bookings, start to finish in the day they didn't think about charge time <laughs> so hilarious wow. wow. watching so that. so for the people that want to know how the the north star looks like here's a photo i'm not yeah, sure if we are showing anything on uh, like uh, really stream but looking, it's yeah got this, like, it looks really weird, uh, someone yeah. punched me in the nose look to it beep, bop, boop, beep, yeah boop. like That's we're like, actually showing a like a 360 <laughs> spin of the, the the headset right zim uh i don't think so i've only got the hand tracky one mike all oh, right. Okay. Okay. I might have missed um, so, if you give me that. Sorry. So, so um, yeah, that's what it looks like. But uh, like uh, Nathy said, like the Hololens is pretty expensive, right? Like, how much is the Hololens? A couple of grand, grand. Like, maybe. You I think now you can it's not even like a consumer like, version. Like, no, 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 it's true. But like, um, <laughs> what what they're saying is that Project North Star only costs a hundred dollars. Uh, for Leap Motion to manufacture it like at a scale, um, so it could easily pr be priced around like the two hundred dollar mark, which I think is a great price for for a headset like this. How how did um, it do that? That's what I want to know. Like, how did you get well, so high res screens at one hundred twenty well, frames? Yeah, it's a very. Good you'll question. soon be able to find out yourself because they're actually having this. The whole thing is going to be open source, not just the hardware, but all the software mm -hmm. that they've developed as well. They're giving it out for free. Wow. So if you're interested in like making your own headset, like, you know, if you're a company and you want to make a headset, then you can use the specs. Ooh, they they, they must be selling our data to Cambridge. I was just about to say the same thing. I was like, they're getting our data. Haters. <laughs> wait, wait, at the back of the box, it says no, 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 it's, a, it's a joke. I, I'm, I am very yeah. excited about this. I am. But I think that that's the, that's the exciting thing, right? Because Leap Motion aren't keeping this technology to themselves. No. They've obviously made some amazing wizardry here, yeah. and they're going to sell it to anyone who wants to make their own headset. So this means that these kind of headsets will be out in the wild, maybe in about a year or two yeah. years' time, and they're going to be affordable enough for everyone to buy one. Yeah. And if you look at some of the, uh, the videos, I don't know if Zim's playing the video of like all the different use cases that they've shown off in the demo so far, like with the cube, and uh, Zim, Zim forgot that video no, no, as well. I've got the cube. I've got the cube. That's the only thing I've got, but it's not a very okay. long loop. <laughs> Oh no! Right, there was a, there was a multiple one like showing the different use cases, but um, but yeah, yeah like, there was cool. one where there was a guy's uh like hand, and it was tracking his hand, and like a little tab comes out of his hand, and there's some buttons there. You can interact with that kind of stuff. So it's yeah. almost like you could wear it, do your normal day to day stuff, but use it as a an, an extra way uh, of like yeah. input. Are, are they uh, and, already sending events. out like dev kits or like prototypes to developers or people? Like so what they announced this week was just like, this is our platform. This is what we're trying to do. This is our goal. And then next week, um, you know, it'll be the week after this podcast goes out, they'll be releasing everything open source for people to start playing around with themselves um, uh, and uh, all, all the hardware. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Interesting. So, um, uh, before so yeah. we uh, move on to the next subject, um, two years ago when I tried to leap, I did something that no man had ever done before and that is this so uh, i tried to track my feet with the leap motion and uh i don't know if you can see it that well but this is what happened i uh are you showing your smelly feet on camera right now yeah 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 i i do so it, it worked so i gave like a handshake to someone with my feet <laughs> oh i see i see i see now. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah it, it's very like like still like if you are interested in tracking your hands in VR, you want to play some demos. It doesn't work with everything uh, though. 
then then I still think it's like a nice nice little gadget to have, you know. I, I only adopted it really really um, recently. A friend of mine, a Portuguese guy, uh, gave me gave me this kind of came over to the barbecue last summer and gave me this thing, and he's like, "Hey, have a, have a play with it." So I've only gotten to play with it about say nine months ago, and I looked around for everything that was available, installed it, and all that. I found it runs quite hot. Was the first that, thing. That's, and, yeah. Like it runs proper hot, and then the second yeah. thing was. If you don't have a 3D printer, finding a proper mount for it or a way to mount it is actually kind of awkward. And then the yeah. second thing, the third thing is um, the the vol the tracking volume is frustratingly small uh, mm -hmm. on, on the hands. It's like you know you don't have much more than say like that yeah. much yeah. tracking volume out the front of it. Yeah. And so what you tend to have is, pardon this comment, but you kind of have pedophilic hands in like you know an old space where you're like mm, yes, but and you've got this like. To be fair, that's, originally it was not designed for virtual reality, right? No, it was it actually designed, designed to be placed in front of you so you could have like like a virtual keyboard, keyboard or something yeah. like that. Yeah. That's yeah. what it was originally for. So it's actually cool to see like devices like that get like different applications in a new upcoming industry. It's actually kind of neat. Yeah. But it's nice that they like mixed the, the technology of the Leap Motion now with AR and like combined it together. Because I mean, all the, all the research they did with this Leap Motion is now getting transferred to like the, the next generation. So I think that's that's nice. That's very cool. Also, if you want to get a mount, they were selling those for the lead. They do now. They still yeah, do? They, do they still do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can buy them on their website oh. right now. Yeah, yeah okay. you could. I just they, meant, they, it was all I just meant like I I'd gotten this thing and it was kind of awkward. I was like, well, if I had yeah, a 3D printer, yeah. I could solve my problem yeah. here, right? I mean, oh, I yeah, use exactly. I use like a little little tape for a while on on like the back, but since it's getting so hot, like the tape started to melt. <laughs> I, I try to use blue tack, but the issue with the rift is that uh, whatever surface they have on the front, it, it doesn't really things don't stick to it very well, which is probably yeah, a good no. thing. But you know, anyway. plus plus you'll be covering up some of the um, the LED, the LEDs, the IR LEDs underneath the, the with, with the yeah, so it won't even not, no idea the cameras that are on the front end. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Uh, Maybe they could use them themselves. Maybe that's what the cameras are for. Who knows? Get, like automatically integrated. No one knows. But that, that are the rumors, right? I mean, hand tracking and and depth uh, information and yeah. but hey, whatever. They first need to unlock it. So uh, yeah. yeah, achievement unlocked. Uh, but talking about um, AR, like uh, Bethesda recently uh, showed off a really really cool AR dragon uh, video on their Twitter page. I don't know if you got the videos in. Uh, is that the one you've got? A dragon? Yeah. Can, uh, you, can you can you see that? I think it's a bunny rabbit. No, oh, no, 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 it's a dragon. See? It's a dragon. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so, so Zim is actually showing the video. The troll. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, we, we actually, yeah, we nabbed the video to show you, but like, I thought it was like a really impressive uh, AR video that they were showing off. Uh, obviously, you know, Bethesda making Skyrim and, you know, they're pros at making dragons, but this is what AR should look like. Like, I thought it looked really impressive as an AR demonstration, right? Oh, I was sold the second I saw. I was wow. like, you're kidding me. This has got to be CGI. Dude. And the fact, the, the way the shadows fall on the table, it's a really short little clip, yeah. but it's Alduin from Skyrim, right? Uh, that, is that what yeah, it is? It's basically the final boss dragon from Skyrim, is what it is. Mike, Mike or Skyrim <laughs> experts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That looks legit freaking awesome. Yeah, that's that looks, what I meant. Like, that that is scary, I too. Like, I would be scared if I would see this on my. Like, how it yeah. moves, like the animations, my base. So impressive. Wow. So impressive. Wow. Yeah. And that's kind of like the bar, right? If uh -huh. all AR can be like that good, then I'm still Yeah, my, my, my reaction to this was very, very simple. It was, it was right. You know, before I saw this clip, I was like, AR is kind of meh. The second I see this <laughs> clip, I think I can now have a pet dragon like that looks this good. I'm sold. Yeah. Like, just give me that headset. Yeah. I'm done. This is the shadows yeah, totally. totally that do it, right? Like the shadows. It is the shadows. Like, yeah. so impressive. I mean, they simulate realistic. that. Well, that, 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 that will cost Amazing. a lot of, like, battery power for your mobile phone, I'm afraid. So that will be a lot of charging <laughs> enemy while, while you are petting your dragon. But... Yeah, it's nice. I'm throwing nice. money the at price, the screen. And you the see the little trackers on the dragons. table, guys. So there's these like little, it's like what, do you yeah. remember like the original, original when there was a partnership still between Valve and Oculus and they had those pictures of the rooms where they'd done all the Valve VR days and stuff and they had the tracking like prints yeah. all over the room. This it's is just, what they yeah. do for AR. Like a buddy of mine has been cons consistently trying to convince me to get these um, AR business cards where, where literally you've got a mobile phone, you look at it and something is popping out of your business card, which is kind of neat, but it's super kitschy. And so I'm like, nah, not for me, but I this love that kind of stuff. Yeah. Soon we can have a little mic on our table telling us stuff. Yeah, yeah like so. imagine like you have like a business card and it shows you like a little avatar of yeah, yourself, Mike. like saying oh. like, hey, come visit my channel. 
<laughs> Mike, <laughs> Mike, Mike's like popping up out of his side. Right, guys. That's and then he throws pillows at you, you know, like like yeah. into your face, like, "Hey, free pillows, free pillows." Oh, if you want to have more, go to my channel. Frankly, yeah. when you said that thing, Buy one yourself. When you said that, yeah. thing, Rowdy, I I only thought of Paradise Decay. I thought his little three D animated model oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. popping off a business card, like that would be <laughs> who mods for the yeah. uh, for the show. PD, yeah, and we thank you again, PD, for all your hard work. By the way, really appreciate yes. it. Um, so moving on to our final topic, which is the Infinidec treadmill. Like, I don't know if you guys mm. remember the scene in Ready Player One where Wade Watts, he goes into his little hideout. He's got his little, uh, you know, sunken uh, treadmill into the floor. And then he like, before he like puts on the headset, he, like runs in each direction, yeah. like a little hamster. It yeah. looked so freaking cool. Well, we're not actually that far away from that kind of uh, future because um, Infinidec, the company, have their awesome omnidirectional treadmill that they're working on right now. It's been in um, uh, development since 2016, believe it or not. Okay. What's up, Zim? Come on. Fetch share. treadmills. They're all, they're all horrible <laughs> all right. to use. They feel awful. They are so abnormal that we are nowhere near have solving this. This is a very difficult problem. Have you used oh, the deck? Talking about the Omni, I guess. I mean, that was kind of like the... It doesn't matter. They're all yeah. very similar. It's the same as those goddamn rocket shoes that we got from whatever his name, Heinemann. With the freaking <laughs> survival <laughs> kit. It's all the same. I backed that. Um, <laughs> you know you didn't. <laughs> no. No, so so what would uh, i'm intrigued like what what do you envisage the future to be like then zim if 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 you don't want to use a treadmill what are you going to use it's to this is fair this is a very difficult thing because you can solve the the problem here is you you can't you can't solve your um vestibular system if you don't actually yeah, move i agree you can't re you can't resolve that i think this is not a simple problem and and everyone's you know, I'm again, kind of what Rowdy just said. Jack in. Just, just for something, just for the idiots in the room. Something that like is me. going to what, what does that mean? <laughs> is going to electrically stimulate uh, the sensors in my brain that are going to give me that same reaction. It's not going to be me walking in place on a slippery surface. Yeah. The the, the thing that that that, I mean, it is a step forward. I I do think that it is again a little step forward. But the thing that models me the most is like running uphill, running downhill, doing stairs. All of that kind of stuff is not going to work with this. It's going to feel very strange. It's going to feel very strange. You spent That's 20, 30 happened. years, right? Like getting used to what it feels like to walk around the place. Yeah. You yeah. can't just you can't just yeah. fool that in two minutes. Yeah, but that, like, like, like it depends on if if it's a treadmill that like I don't know what like things like pop out where you can like step on and stuff like that. Yeah. I would think that would be much cool. And yeah. there are stuff like that already. Yeah? Like I, not treadmills, but you can have like um it's, it's basically, I need to look up the video and I'll show you guys some other time, but it's like a, a 3D ball, like, mm -hmm. uh, which has like, um, uh, you, you can manipulate it, that, that ball. And then someone on the other side who has a similar ball can put his hands on there and feel how you are manipulating it in real time. Yeah. So, so people are feeling <laughs> each other's balls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's what everyone wants, right? Well, that's we need more females wants. on this podcast yeah. before we talk about this further, that's, guys. That's, that's great. <laughs> But I like I think like treadmill wise I think like it depends on your expectations. I think this is very nice. It's not a slippery surface anymore where you have like like wearing shoes again where you you know you're it's kind of silly and it's clumsy. It's clumsy. It's getting a lot better now because as far as I know, I'm not sure like Mike Mike knows this for sure. Like isn't it like a a you're walking over something that just just moves by itself as well, right? It's like a, yeah. like a home trainer in a way, right? So, so yeah, like how this works and how it differs from others is that it's actually omnidirectional. So it's a treadmill, but it has a treadmill that goes forward in one direction, which has one motor powering it, and then bands across that treadmill, which go in the other direction. So you can actually walk in a diagonal direction, and it still feels fine by the looks of things um because other others like you've mentioned you know the uh the omni were like a dish where you had to wear special shoes and kind of looked a bit weird um but this looks like more like a proper treadmill looks yeah, like a yeah. bit industrial i think it's i think it's um, cool and i think it indeed solves a lot of like the room experiences and, and stuff like that but i think it would only be right for flat surfaces not for anything yeah so, well, that's so the way th how this works is uh, they have a Vive tracker on the base of your spine and then one on each foot. So the tracker on the base of your spine is there to track your position on the treadmill. So you never actually reach the edges, even if you start running, for example. So that's quite clever that it tracks your location. Yeah. 
Um, but then the feet are purely there to represent your feet in the virtual world. So when you look down, you can actually see your feet moving in real time. So it kind of feels a bit more natural. Um, but, but, you know, even though I'm not a massive fan of Skyrim, as we clearly know, um, I just thought like walking around using this treadmill in Skyrim would be pretty amazing. I think in, in my mind, you know, having that kind of one-to-one walking, do you think that'd be cool or not? I slopes. think that's yeah, okay, it's so a very tr- hilly game so is the problem. So it wouldn't be. I'll tell you what it would be. A, the, the the thing is, I really, really want this to work, Mike. I, I mean, I'm, I'm actually, yeah. although I'm totally right now against treadmills, it's only out of utter disappointment that I can't have yeah. what was on, in Wii Sports uh, with with the Wii Fit. Right, you had the the Wii board, and you had the ability <laughs> to go for a board. jog right around the island like 25k or whatever you just put the weed in your pocket <laughs> oh, yeah. and you ran and i loved that because like i'd be in my my little dumpy london flat right in in a cold winter time and i didn't want to go jogging outside so i jog in place for like an hour and i'd break a sweat and all that and it would help me a little bit but what i i spoke to the um the unicorns people who do all these kind of crazy games and I actually mm-hmm. asked them i was like can you like implement a game which is which is including running because no one's doing it and i think it's this great idea they did it they put it out there i don't think it's released as a full game or anything yet we were sprinting and the 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 thing with this is you can walk right and it's it's clear it's there you can you can walk around or whatever and uh, as rowdy said on a flat surface one of the biggest things right now that's a problem is the way the headset really works against you for any kind of that type of motion because if, if you're jogging up and down at all, your sweet spot is compromised. If you're latch, ratcheting it to your face, so your sweet spot isn't compromised. It's very uncomfortable, uh, you know, while you're running or jogging. But I really do still hope that we get the weight mm. down and we get an experience mm. where even if you're just standing in place with some trackers on your feet or whatever, you're able actually to go for a jog in like a, you know, up a mountain pass or something like that. Like even that I would really like, but I'm still the, mm. the, the treadmill. I, I can't see, you know, people buying something this this large, this much equipment. Again, either yeah. you got special mm-hmm. shoes or or you don't have special shoes, but this thing is ginormous. Yeah, it's but very it, big. But you know, you know where I like, see this more? In like sports applications like the gym. Like physio. Physio, those kind of things. People who yeah. don't get out a lot uh, for like sports mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But for like hardcore yeah. gaming uh, – it's going to introduce like a, a new level of motion sickness, I think, again. Like, you know, people get motion sick from like just like pulling a controller. There are people who are going to get motion sick from this kind of stuff as well. Because yeah. what you see with your eyes is not going to be exactly what is happening with your with your going up and down unless it's a flat surface. Yeah, but the, but I still think that like the 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 previous treadmills we had were like pretty big and they were hard to package up and stuff like that. Like the newer ones, like the newer generation, are like easier to like let's say sell in the first place mm-hmm. to people because that was a problem. Like the packages were too big, was too expensive. Also, like Catwalk VR is like a like is is going to come up with like a mini, so it's not that big anymore. Of course, it's still big, but it's getting smaller. Plus, I think that the people who are going to invest into it do know what they are getting into uh, might get a little motion sick at the start, but you can get used to certain things. And I don't think everyone is going to get motion sick. Plus um, I think like we do need people investing into this because the moment people do invest into this, we get better treadmills or something as Rowdy said, like something that actually manipulates the service and actually builds things in front of you that, that just Mm -hmm. looks at the game, how it's built and, you know, but I think, I think like the important to have R and D, but I think it's also very dangerous to bring out a product uh, on a market and then have people realize, oh, this does not work how it's intended. Uh, VR mm-hmm. doesn't work, or threat mills don't work. Since I do think there is a potential for this, but uh, I think it needs to yeah. be brought out at a point that the technology is there as well. Yeah. And I mean, you, I, I can imagine that it's not as large anymore as it is, but it's still motorized, so it has to be of a certain size it's not something that you can just hide away or a noise right. it's, it, this this just sounds like something for the early adopters i think the early adopters mm. do know that this is going to be a, a thing that can also be immersion breaking but on the other side if you run on mm. a treadmill and you go down the stairs then yeah that's that's that doesn't line up but if you just stand there and do it it also doesn't line up so it no, doesn't really matter so. but that's why i'm saying like it's going to to introduce a new level of, of motion sickness it's not going yeah. to be and it's still different from when you push it because we're all gamers we've all been playing so many games we know that if you push uh, a controller uh, a thumbstick forward you you move forward 
For us, that's probably already less motion sickness inducing. But if you're actually taking those steps, going down a stair, yeah, and it's not lining up with what you're actually feeling, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be really weird. Yeah, initially I wasn't. I, initially I was disagreeing with you, Rowdy. But now that you've kind of talked it through, I have to say that that is, things like that have triggered me in the past that way. So. Yeah. And it, it's funny you mentioned that because um, I had a few friends over a couple of days ago and we were just checking out like a load of VR stuff. They'd never tried VR before. And um, I was introducing them slowly, but we ended up with Farpoint at the very, very end. And I hadn't even played Farpoint myself. because So I didn't even know that it was like smooth locomotion. Um, but they were getting pretty rough yeah. um, by, yeah. by the end of it. Um, yeah, I, I thought it was great, by the way. You know, like having the gun in yeah, yeah, Farpoint was awesome. Oh, but I, but, I mean, yeah, they, I they were really buy that Infinite Dark and uh, and try and messing around with it myself, just because I love this kind of stuff. But I do think that we need to see this with like with with a word of caution, because it's going to be adding something to an already kind of experience that isn't completely optimized. I think there's one or two ways that this can go properly. Number one, the DDR route. You have a very simple kind of almost throwaway type of thing that's bundled with a game where it's got perfect Mm. software integration. You know what you're getting. Uh, You're not getting more than that. You're not getting less. You're just getting this thing. You throw the mat on your thing. You can pull it out in the middle of the summer, play it once, put it back in the cabinet, whatever. You you want to dance, Matt. Is this this what we're talking about? Of course I want to dance, Matt. Mike, I can dance. That's (laughs) from pro here. Uh, But aside from that, you've got – I actually never played DDR, by the way. That was my wife. Um, and then the, sure. the, the second thing is the platform su- supporters, if, if this is going to really succeed, something like this, I still believe that the platform supporters need to back it. So what I mean is an Oculus, yeah. uh, an HTC or a Sony needs to have yeah. something because it needs to be fully integrated yeah. so that it's easy for mm-hmm. developers to pipe into it, that it's not oh. this huge headache, yeah, that it's then, not boutique for the software. It's the same problem that I, any of these boutique the solutions yeah. have. I, I agree. I agree. But the thing is, then you're talking about something that is, well, more mainstream. This sounds like we're we're still not like if you look at how how we have yeah. been proceeding with like treadmills in the past and now, mm. it's not like a big step. Like we haven't really proceeded that much. Of course, as I said before, they are getting smaller, cheaper. Mm. Maybe they also know better how to market it. But I think this is still something the early adopters first need to pick up and then boost it up, and then we will see like big platforms. I don't think like if you want to buy one now, don't expect big platforms to promote this or support it or i don't think so at least yeah i agree but it is interesting because rowdy rowdy said something and obviously rowdy being the most qualified person in the room to talk about these kind of things um but like so when you're on a treadmill and you're wearing a vr headset you say that there's still that feeling that they can't replicate in that your movement is that is that right? Is, am I understanding that correct? Our visionary system is very very strong. It's very it's 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 overpowering all of our sensory systems. So if we see, that's also why people get motion sick in, in VR because what what they're feeling, their vis- vestibular system and their visionary system is is not coinciding. And what happens is that your you, that is motion sickness basically. Your brain says something is terribly wrong here because we are moving forward, but your senses in your body are not detecting mm. it which means that either your brain is failing, which means this is not a good thing, or something is wrong with your senses. So it, it, it's, it's, right. it's a very, that's why you get motion sick because it's your brain basically saying like something is very, very wrong. And I think indeed right. with, with this kind of stuff, you get that, that feeling even more because you are bring another sensory system in there, which is movement, yeah. uh, physical movement that is going to be conflicting with your vestibular movement and going to be conflicting with your with your uh, with your uh, visual system so it's nicely and just to add I, I think that, that's nicely just to add to that as well so yeah. the reason why your body tells you to throw up is this goes back to neanderthal days again if those two systems aren't matching up chances are you ate some bad food yeah. and you need to throw it up before you poison yourself and die from it so that's actually where it comes from yeah Okay, so there we have it. The Infinite Deck is a lot of choice. <laughs> so don't buy one. <laughs> that now, I, don't, I, don't I, always, I always think that these kind of technologies are very important. I think that that R and D in this is is, is amazing. That's, yeah, that's it's important. But virtual reality. It is important. I don't want to be specifically yeah. negative right. about this, but I do no. think that we need to right. approach this with a word the, of caution. The thing is, things like you say, they need to they need to bring them out reiterate them yeah. develop them yeah. keep on increasing them making them better and eventually we'll get somewhere yeah. that it will be a reasonable and, product yeah. and the final um, point here the thing i was saying earlier mike was physiotherapy 
this is something yeah. that yeah. has an immediate yeah, yeah. application there. I mean, how difficult, how painful, yeah. how me- how much mental anguish do you have to go through if you've lost the movement in your limbs or whatever? Put someone in VR. We already yeah. know that has a pain suppressing effect. Put them on something like this. Get them to just have a walk around yeah. in something like Orbis VR or whatever. You mm-hmm. get the social which, element yeah. that that keeps you moving. I mean, that's that's which, a great application. By the way, uh, Virtuix Omni, the Jan Goodkluck, who's Belgian, by the way, he yeah. went on to. Um, the, how is that called? The sharks or like the, the, the investor program where you can like uh, introduce your product. Oh, like the Dragon's Den? The Dragon's Den, Dragon's yeah. Den. And he introduced right. it there. And all of them were interested in the product as long as they would use it in a sports environment like a gym. They were all interested up until they heard, of course, the price. Then they all like backed out. So <laughs> I, I do think that there is a potential here to, to, to already bring this out now, indeed, with physiotherapy in the gym. But the price then also needs to be something that you can, for example, a gym could buy, like, for example, 20 of these and line them all up and then uh, have people yeah. like jump yeah. in and not have to pay like yeah. two or three thousand. Do we know a price? We don't, but like Infinidec uh, recently announced, um, you know, you can buy them if you're a developer, basically, to to, to implement something into right. it. But like you say, I get the kind of feeling that it's more going to be like medical or educational or sports the right, that, yeah. that invest the oh, money. Maybe, if you want to get R&D money, research and development money, that is the, the, the place they need to go to. Military, yeah. uh, um, hospitals, uh, and uh, educational. Those three things, because yeah. you can get the R&D money and make something that will eventually be consumer ready. Yeah, I agree. So, nice. So, so nice. for now, I will have to sit in my work van and or wait. go into the military. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sign up, Nathy. <laughs> yeah, you see me like in the army. You know how that's going through. Yeah, that... Well, you've got plenty of practice in onward, right? You know, so you sh- well, sharp shooting the other day. That's, that's, uh, if that's enough, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm totally qualified, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've done my time. I've done my Actually, time. On that, on that point, guys, have, have any of you ever ever played um, America's Army? It was it was a program. Oh, dude, dude, yeah, was, dude I, yeah. it was released I, by I the U.S. government. Like, like, yeah, dude. That's the best shooter I've it's ever It's really, played. really good. It was like a total mill sim. <laughs> and the thing is, like, if you take something like Onward, I, I'm surprised that the, I, the U.S. government hasn't actually con- hopped into VR yet because yeah, that was so it was incredibly good at, at recruiting people because they got yeah, yeah, yeah. They understood yeah. about it. They had you do all kinds of things, even like coming out of a plane and stuff. But it was all very much – you had to take an actual medical course in the game. <laughs> Yeah. qualify get your medals and all that kind of stuff they taught you real life stuff and then you understood what it was like and people yeah. were like well i can go in the army yeah. and so they yeah. bring, it was it was hugely successful like armor all on the under yeah, legend so they should just jump into vr and i hope they do it i yeah that, that that's like like they could use onward as an example too to like get people into the army maybe i don't know if that's uh yeah. if that's like that, that could be a good thing right uh, i don't know it, it, Reminds me of because um, Ernest Klein obviously he wrote Ready Player One, but he also wrote another book called Armada, and basically that's kind of that kind of uh, idea in that everyone plays this game called Armada, which is like a, a pilot. Uh, you're a pilot of a spaceship shoot taking down enemy ships, and they take the biggest uh, scorers of the game and they actually recruit them as actual pilots to fight uh, and save the world. And if you if you're interested, you ch- you've checked out Ready Player One. You're looking for another book. Check out Armada because it's also very very cool. Are, are you are you yeah. sponsored by uh, <laughs> by oh. Klein? Uh, I, I'm sponsored by Ernest Klein. Yeah, uh, confirmed. Like five dollars in his pocket. There we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we'll wrap this uh, week show up. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Sorry we couldn't do this live. Oh, uh, me and Zim will be in London um, checking out some stuff at EGX Res. If you're at the event, by the way, you should uh, tweet us or contact us on Facebook and, and come and say hi if you're there. Uh, we'd love to meet up with some fans. That would be really, really cool as well. Um, but just to remind you, obviously, this is a weekly VR, AR, and MR talk show, live streamed every Saturday on Nathie's YouTube channel, uh, 4 p.m. in Europe, 3 p.m. in the UK, 9 a.m. in Central US. If you missed the show, check out the re-upload every Sunday on my own channel, Virtual Reality Oasis, or check out the audio-only version, which is available on Google Play Music, iTunes, and on SoundCloud. Thanks for being part of the show. We really, really appreciate that you understand that we do these things uh, pre-recorded sometimes, but we'll try and interact with you as much as we can in the chat when we do that. So we will see you on next week's episode. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see ya. Bye.